All right, let's take a look at that trig of any point and get going with that. So, remember, here's the things we kind of talked about in class. So, we've got our six. The first three that we're dealing with, we are used to dealing with, right, the SOHCAHTOA. And then we've got the reciprocal uh, ratios, the cosecant, the secant, the cotangent. Okay, so cosecant and sine are connected. Secant and cosine and cotangent and tangent. And they're just reciprocal, so they just flip, right? Tangent opposite over adjacent, cotangent adjacent over opposite. So, but remember that... Um, Alright, so how we've been talking about them is when we get that point on that graph, right? And looking at this being our reference angle where we start with our with our angle and having that opposite side is y, that adjacent side is x, that y and x value from the points, and then the radius is that hypotenuse. Um, so we have those same trig ratios set up in that way. And th this is really the one that we use um, when we're doing these ones. So let's take a look at a few of the problems. So let's uh, we're going to do each type. So we've got sine. Okay. Well, sine, remember, is the y value over the r value. So we've got the y value, negative square root of 5, right? Oh, that's the y value. So now we just need the r value. So we're going to have to use a Pythagorean theorem, right? Make that triangle. So we go negative 2 squared plus negative square root of 5 squared equals r squared. Now remember, if you're using a, some calculators, if you don't put parentheses around the negatives, it'll kick out a negative. Whenever you square something, it will never be negative. So these negatives don't really apply in the Pythagorean theorem. So we get 4 plus square root of 5 is, square root is 5. So we get 9 equals r squared. Take the square root of that. So we get 3. So our r is 3. And there's our answer. There's that ratio. For tangent, that's the y over the x. So we take the y value, 15, over the x value, 12. You can leave it like that. You could reduce it and do 5 over 4. Same thing. Okay, easy enough with those. Now, cosine is our last regular one. So that's the x over the r. So once again, we've got to find that r value. So we go 3 squared plus negative square root of 7 squared equals r squared. 3 squared is 9. Uh, negative square root is 7 squared is just positive 7 equals r squared. So we get 16 equals r squared. Take the square root. And we get 4 equals r. So x value is 3. r value is 4. So 3 over 4. Okay, now the cosecant, remember that's the opposite of the sine. So instead we get the reciprocal, and it's r over y. So once again, we've got to find our radius. So negative 13 squared plus negative 9 squared equals r squared. So 13 squared is 169. 9 squared is 81 equals r squared. So let's add those up. So 150. So 150 equals r squared, take the square root of that, and we'd end up with the square root of 150, whatever that is. So you could put that in as a decimal, you could uh, simplify that out if you really wanted to. Um, for us, I'm just going to leave it like that. So square root of 150 over negative 13. There would be our answer for that one. Okay, now secant and cotangent. So secant is the opposite, remember, of cosine. So instead of x over r, it's r over x. Okay, so we need to find r again. So square root of 11 squared plus negative 5 squared equals r squared. So we get 25 plus 11. So 36 equals r squared. Take the square root, and we get 6 equals r. So 6 over our x value is square root of 11. Now, you could leave it like that. But technically, we can't have those square roots on the bottom, so it's a good I, good habit to get into fixing those. All you do to fix that is multiply by that same thing over itself, your denominator. Because when those multiply across, we get a positive 11, and then the top multiplies to 6 squares of 11. And that's really what our answer should look like.
know it's a little bit uglier, but that's what it's going to be. Okay, cotangent is opposite of tangent, so it's going to be x over y. So, x is 18, y is 6, so we could, I guess, reduce that to 3, or, you know, 3 over 1, but um, you can leave it as either of those. That one would work, and it's probably the easiest right. So there you go. There's a couple of examples. That's really all it comes down to. Um, so good luck.